Guck Cassidy and the Sundance Cheeseburger. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 savage insults on Trailer Park Boys. The park is a complete mess. Frig off, burp. Frig off. For this list, we're looking at some of the funniest, most iconic, and downright brutal insults ever spoken on the hit TV series Trailer Park Boys. We'll be taking into account recurring insults, the context of the insults, as well as how well the insults perfectly match the person they're used on. Which insults from the residents of Sunnyvale left you busting a gut? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Big Coagulated Gravy Hot Dog Bun The only thing weirder than if Randy were to wear a shirt is what he does when he's gearing up for a fight. Whether he's throwing down with someone like Cyrus or Ricky, Randy's first response is always the same, taking off his pants. The season six episode, The Way of the Road, features one such moment when Randy arrives to evict Ricky's stepdad, Ray, from Sunnyvale. There's Randy with no pants on. What's going on here, Randy? Julian, there's your new trailer. Ray, you're a squatter. As the altercation occurs, Bubbles provides some insight into Randy's unusual habit. I think it's just a scare tactic, because who wants to grab a hold of Randy when he's just in his underwear? There's just, then there's just that one piece of fabric separating you from his from his package. In the end, Bubbles concludes his explanation with a hilarious yet insulting comment directed towards Randy's greasy eating habits. But when he's in his underwear, you know, he can get like a football player and he's hard to knock over that big coagulated gravy hot dog bun bastard. Number nine, smarter cats and dogs. Throughout the series, Trevor and Corey have been the target of much verbal abuse and insults from their fellow trailer park residents, especially Ricky. Are they all girls or are some of them boys? They're all female, you <laughs> it's why they're called ladybugs. One such insult occurs during the third episode of season two, where Julian tasks the duo to perform some less than legal activities for him. As the two head off to complete their assignment, Ricky comments off screen about how dumb they are, claiming that even household pets can easily outsmart them. You know, I've met cats and dogs smarter than Trevor and Corey. Most cats and dogs are smarter than Trevor and Corey. While his words may be harsh, there is some truth to them, as Corey and Trevor have been known to mess up the boys' plans in the most hilarious ways. Number 8. Mustard Tiger What are you looking at my gut for? As one of the most well-known characters on Trailer Park Boys, Phil Collins left quite the mark with his gutsy physique, love of burgers, and perhaps funniest of all, the iconic Mustard Tiger moment. Oh, did you just call me four eyes? Well, you I just met a big Mustard Tiger. Coined by Bubbles, this iconic term was not originally meant to be an insult, as he thought it was more adorable than offensive. Unfortunately, Phil doesn't take it well. I mean, he had a big tiger and he was all covered in mustard, and I thought it was, you know, a pretty cute little name, and all of a sudden he snaps and starts smashing Ricky's car up with a ladder. Coupled with his concern over his missing son Jacob, Phil overreacts and turns his anger on Ricky. Things get even more chaotic when Ricky proceeds to defend himself, and the two are caught in a comedic standoff trading swears and insults while fending each other off with a hockey stick and a ladder. We couldn't make this up if we tried. Number 7. Baloney Tugboat While good old Philadelphia Collins may have a deep love for burgers, they're not the only sandwich he's known to obsess over. I want my money back, Bubbles! While attending a singles dance during the special Say Goodnight to the Bad Guys, Phil's hunger makes him desperate for some bologna sandwiches. However, when the boy's schemes get in the way of his appetite, Phil takes his hunger for bologna a little too far. Take a whole bologna log, take some bread, take some mustard, and then go f off, would ya? Fed up with Phil constantly badgering him for bologna, Bubbles resolves the issue by giving Phil a huge piece of bologna, which he carries for the rest of the night causing Ricky to give him a less than flattering nickname. Number six, make like a tree. While Leahy may have it out for Ricky, the same can't be said for his daughter, Trina. Despite being Leahy's daughter, Trina ends up befriending Ricky and unlike her dad, chooses to believe that underneath his rough exterior and many, many layers, he's actually a good person and even tries to get him some gifts. Who's the shirt for, Trina? Yeah, who's pepperoni? It's Ricky's. Ricky's pepperoni. Naturally, Leahy does not take this well and furiously confronts the boys, threatening to expose their illegal operation. How dare you involve my daughter in your hemisphere of shit? 
furious, the boys drive Leahy off, but not before Ricky gets the last word in with a less than friendly version of the expression, make like a tree and leave. Make like a tree and f off. Number five, greasy caveman insults. Because of his physical appearance, poor hygiene, and violent behavior, recurring antagonist Sam Losco has often been called a caveman throughout the series. Newsflash shit glasses, you're going back to your cave. The people who have called him this include Ricky, Phil Collins, Leahy, Barb, as well as Randy. So sign it so I can get started. I'm not signing shit. Why don't you go back and pave your cave, caveman? Heck, even Sam has referred to himself as a caveman at least once. Naturally, Sam doesn't take too kindly to being called a caveman, which causes him to turn violent and almost always ends up with him getting arrested. Ironically, Sam does eventually become a real-life caveman after he's discovered living in a cave in Season 9. Oh, ah! Crack him again, Ricky! As messed up as this sounds, at least Sam learned to embrace his true self. The metamorphosis is complete. Sam is an actual caveman. Number 4. Glue. Ricky may not get along well with people, but at least he has a soft spot for animals like his goldfish Orangey. Oh, you finally passed out in the pool, did you, buddy? <sighs> Sadly, he still has a lot to learn when it comes to taking care of him. Ricky, how many shoulders did you give him? <sighs> I don't know, five or six. After a night of partying causes Orangey to permanently sleep with the fishes, Bubbles and Julian quickly work to replace him before Ricky finds out. Find a fish that looks just like Orangey. Despite how simple the task is, Corey and Jacob still manage to mess it up. I need a goldfish like that big. It's got to be alive. Goldfish? Yeah. You serious? When Bubbles learns of their failure, he starts tearing them a new one. Did you idiots go to the grocery store? Yeah, they sell fish. And lobsters, usually. Are you two deck pinchers hot the glue? Normally, Bubbles is known for being reasonable, but watching him lose his temper and insult Corey and Jacob the way he does is truly one of his more savage moments. But what if they're frozen? What they're if not going to be frozen! Number 3. Teaching 101 As Sunnyvale's self-proclaimed officer of order, Leahy is always at odds with the park's biggest agent of chaos, Ricky. Whose fault is that? It's your fault! Even something as simple as a casual conversation between the two usually ends in a verbal and sometimes physical altercation. In the second episode of season one, Leahy insults Ricky by pointing out his lack of education, a proper home, and how his only real skill set revolves around breaking the law. Hey, I got a good idea. You could teach living in a car and growing dope 101. Unfortunately for Leahy, Ricky isn't one to back off from a fight and retaliates by poking fun at Leahy's own failures, such as his fall from grace as a respectable police officer to a trailer park supervisor. And you could teach how to get drunk, get fired from the police force, become a lousy trailer park supervisor that sucks, hangs around with a doesn't wear a shirt and looks like a dick, thinks he looks good 101. Now that was one heck of a comeback. Number two, can I get 15 half-eaten cheeseburgers to go? Almost everyone loves cheeseburgers, but only Randy can take it to such extremes. Some kind of tiger attacked me. I ate seven cheeseburgers. Randy's cheeseburger obsession is so intense that it's practically an addiction, and he's willing to do just about anything, both legal and illegal, to satisfy it. You're prostituting yourself out for cheeseburgers again, aren't you? Man's gotta eat, Julian. As a result, Nearly everyone in Sunnyvale has teased Randy for this, including the park's resident rapper J-Rock, who's well known for constantly dissing Randy. I hear cola fizz and mustard and relish coagulating together with french fries and onion rings, Randy, but you know what? I don't hear a heart. One of J-Rock's most famous jabs at Randy takes place in season two's The Bible Pimp, where he treats Randy's large gut like a drive through Can I get 15 half-eaten cheeseburgers to go? The fact that J-Rock requests 15 cheeseburgers is made even funnier by the fact that Randy has actually eaten that many burgers in one sitting multiple times. I just want to remind everyone that it's only one cheeseburger per park resident. <laughs> Does that go for you too, Randy? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. 
every knock knock who's there. Sir, it's knock knock. Who's there? Someone who just failed grade 10. Along with his legendary Ricky isms, Ricky's also well known for his infamous knock knock jokes. While technically not legitimate jokes, they offer the perfect outlet for Ricky to taunt both enemies and allies alike, as well as freely express himself while savagely tearing people a new one. While some of them are quick and to the point, a lot of Ricky's jokes end in savage rants that really get under his target's skin. Knock, knock. Who's there? Randy. I'll tell you who's in there. A drunk, washed up police officer who arrested Lucy, put pepper all over her when she's pregnant. Regardless of whether Ricky's jokes make sense or not, they're still some of the funniest things he's ever said over the past two decades of Trailer Park Boys. Knock, knock. Who's there, Rick? Somebody. Somebody who? Somebody whose ex wife owns the trailer park. The only reason you got the job as trailer park supervisor is you got fired from the police force because you're big time, but we're not going to talk about that, are we? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.